Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Morale Booster with John Ogulu. And let's uh, all welcome today Susan Young. Susan is the owner of um, Susan's Heavenly Window Coverings. So, Susan, thank you for joining me on the program. My pleasure. Likewise. Okay, Susan, uh, my listeners will be eager to know who you are and what you do. So, please tell us what exactly you do and who you are. I'm Suzanne Young. I own Suzanne's Heavenly Window Coverings because I hate naked windows. I sell <laughs> blind shades, shutters, draperies, anything you need to cover those naked windows. I right. come out, uh, make an appointment, come out, measure, and usually leave with a quote before, I mean, do a quote before I leave. Uh, okay, that's a good one. Yeah, you know, they say you should have a passion. You should know you should know your why before you get into any business. So you hate to see naked windows. <laughs> I absolutely love that part of it. Okay, so uh, Susan, could you please tell us what motivated you to become an entrepreneur? Well, I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always I've had a great career starting when I'm uh, before I moved to Atlanta in 1984, wow. I uh, was on the road promoting motivational rallies and sales seminars coast to coast, promoting right. Paul Harvey, Art Link Letters, Zig Ziglar, yeah. Dennis Waitley. I mean, the biggest names in the business back in the day. Right. So I went on the road promoting that program, selling $10 tickets on a 30% commission. Whoa and got my PhD in life. They said you had to make 40 calls a day to be successful. Wow. And I wow. drove around Charlotte, North Carolina on my very first rally, trying to find that 40th call to make. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, and I, I was there with four other guys and sold more tickets than they did. We sold out three weeks early. Oh, okay. Wow, that's a good one. You know, there's one advantage people who have experience in sales always have. First of all, no fear of rejection whatsoever. Secondly, go-getters. And thirdly, <laughs> the money people. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> so can you please tell us why you chose that current line of business, that niche? I think the window industry uh, chose me. Um, I was in the staffing business for 17 years oh, okay. and the last staffing job I had, I opened a staffing service for Delta airlines to support okay. their, um, uh, operation at the airport. And, uh, I worked so hard to get that business opened. And then they, I mean, I got my value from a title and a paycheck. And God said, that is not how you get your value. You get right. it from me. So he had to take my, my prized possession at the time was Delta Staffing Services and, and bring me to my knees. So he had to take my value that I got from a title and a paycheck away from me. And I'm so glad he did. <laughs> so, oh, okay. That's great. So, yeah, so uh, I was contacted by a lady that wanted me to go to work for a new uh, operation, CNS uh, Window Fashions in Tucker, and I lived in Snellville at the time, and uh, she wanted me to set up dealers, which is exactly what I'm doing now. Okay. Uh, but I, I learned the shutter and blind manufacturing from the ground up. So, you know, and I knew I could make more money doing what I do now than, okay. than setting up dealers. So, okay. Okay. So do you do manufacturing or no, you just do, no. okay. I have vendors that okay. manufacture everything that I sell. Okay. So what challenges did you face while transitioning from your, let's say from corporate America to uh, owning your business or from your staffing company to starting your uh, window covering business? I can't remember, but I'm sure there were some. Um, I mean, I've, I, like I said, I've always been an entrepreneur. Right. And um, 
so I can't, I don't really have any, any one, two, threes that, uh, that I could specifically, you know, state right here, right now. Right. Okay. So how did you juggle uh, the low seasons to, you know, how did you, how, what, what did you do exactly to help you go through those trying periods in your business? Because, you know, every business normally has a nurturing stage, a stage where, you know, the income that comes out of the business uh, probably might not be commensurate with your lifestyle or yeah. something. So how did you cope around that period? I just life? get out and make more calls. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd find a subdivision that I hadn't been in before right. and put my cards uh, all over the house. And right. then eventually somebody would call me because I've been doing this for 22 years. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so, um, and then, and then when I would go do a house, I would go back and introduce myself to the realtors that were sitting in the subdivisions back then right. and made friends that way. Uh, I've always been able to, uh, turn a, client into a close friend right 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 so do you do you think it's possible to have this business as a side business as a side gig for you know those people who just don't want to go put their two feet in um, entrepreneurship for example somebody who wants to transition somebody who has a dream of becoming an entrepreneur but doesn't want to let go of their nine to five or you know that job that brings in the paycheck do you think they can start off as having this as a part-time gig or you need to give it your hundred percent funny that you should uh ask that question because i had a client that brought me part of her stimulus check to do the back side of her house and shutters and she said to me i would love to do what you do Right. And she's a dental hygienist here in Monroe. And I said, sit down, let's talk about that. So we are working through her uh, schedule. She works Monday through Thursday, and then she's off on Fridays. And we just went and did a, uh, two installs uh, on Friday. And we are transitioning her to get into my business and work when she wants to. Because you can, you know, you can schedule appointments on the days that you want to work. Oh, okay. So that's great. So um, do you offer any form of uh, mentorship? I know the person you're talking about is definitely somebody you know or someone you've known prior to them reaching out. No, I'm, I'm not interested in doing a mentorship. I just okay. don't have time. <laughs> right, I get so, it. Yeah. I get it. Okay, so uh, what are your projections for your business in the next five years? I am looking to retire. Okay. In the next five years. Okay. And, so and I'm, I want to try to transition her over to buying out my business. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. No problem. You know, like it's a, it's a lucrative niche. And do you think you can have her incorporate any form of training program you know as an extra income stream you know where she could train people who might be interested in the business do you think that's uh possible probably not um i've i've tried to bring people in over the years to have them work for me and right. they've always left after and I, I do a, a a pretty healthy commission 70 30 give them 70 percent of the profits and i still take 30. Uh, and they've all they never wanted to share the business with me so they they quit and opened up their own and none of them are still in this business <laughs> so uh, yeah i don't know it was the stick to or the I mean, I just couldn't fail when right. I started this business because I, I had a family 
I mean, my husband works and, and, uh, and we are a great team. He does, I tell people I sleep with my installer. So, <laughs> um, and, and, and we've always worked great together. Um, but he's got a full-time job. He does mold and radon remediation. And so we would do installs on the weekends. And I just, I mean, it, having a great installer makes or break you. Right. And I can't find an installer that wants to work. Right. So right. that's my biggest uh, challenge. challenge right now. Okay. All right. So um, now what, what, what exactly do you do in terms of window coverings? Do you do only window blinds or are there other accessories that you work on? No, my, my uh, niche is hard treatments, blind oh. shade shutters and the soft treatments like draperies or uh, cornice boards or you know anything that is uh, fabric. Okay, all right. So I, I know there are so many entrepreneurs who might be listening to this program now and probably would want to look into starting something like that. What resources can you provide for them? You know, if they want to get started, how would you advise them to get started? I mean, if they want to get into my business, they need to find a territory that I'm not in <laughs> and um, but um, I don't think that I, I don't have any competition budget blinds uh, I go up against them all the time but they've got a franchise fee on okay. every order that they write okay. and I can beat their prices all day long and there uh, they were more I had more competition before the the downturn in, in uh, 2008. Right. Uh, but a lot of my competition had to go out of business because, I mean, they just, you know, there was nothing happening. In fact, um, one of my builders went out of business owing me about $25,000. Oh. That nearly put us into bankruptcy because I had already put all the blinds in his houses and the checks in the mail, the checks in the mail, the checks in the mail, and it never came. And right. then he filed bankruptcy, right. and, and uh, I was one of his, you know, creditors. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, with the current situation, you know, the current pandemic going on now, um, do you see the business as a recession-proof business? Do you see it as a, a business that can... Um, withstand the current paradigm shift due to the pandemic? I, I have not been as careful as my husband has during this pandemic. And I, I mean, if I would go out and they wore a mask, I would have a mask in the car. Uh, and we were wearing gloves to go in and measure, but I think that my business has is probably recession proof, except during the Great Recession of 2008, when nobody was doing anything. But um, this pandemic has not caused me any any hiccups at all. Okay. All right. No problem. Um, so, what's your advice for? that young entrepreneur who probably might not be able to get any trainings from you and would like to get into this niche? If you've got, if, if you know realtors, they're my best source of, of uh, referrals. Mm. Okay, right. Because they, you know, they're, working with uh is my niche is um is new homes i'd okay. love to go into new homes and then just put something on every window right and um i mean you've got to have a built-in source of business right. but the 
I mean, you've got to be comfortable measuring. Uh, you've got to be able to read a tape measure. And I still make mistakes after 22 years. So, um, but I usually make mistakes when the homeowner follows me around from room to room and, and I'm trying right. to, you know, write down the measurements. And um, so there's, there's a lot of different um, sources for making a mistake. Because most of most of my vendors, um, you have to order online, right. so you have to take from what you've written and put it into a program. <clears throat> and everybody makes mistakes, right. so. <laughs> but I, I try to um, I try to uh, check my work, and I have my I print the uh, print out, and then I have my husband go over it with me. So we catch a lot of that stuff <clears throat> and um but you've got to have a builder that will use you or a realtor that will okay. refer you right okay that's a good tip yeah so, uh, for those of you listening right now this is um susan young she has a passion for window coverings uh the first thing is for you to love what you do she loves what she does she's retiring pretty soon and she's trying to transfer that knowledge to someone who would be able to carry on. So first of all, passion. You should love what you do. So Susan, thank you very much for joining me on the program. Now, if people want to reach out to you to give you business, do you have a direct telephone number where they can call you up right away? And um, Absolutely. My cell phone number is 770-231-5901. And I've got awesome. a website that's www.SusannesHeavenlyWindowCoverings.com and a Facebook page that's the same name. So um, they can get in touch with me. Awesome. So what other social media platforms do you uh, utilize? You just mentioned Facebook. Are you on uh, Instagram? No, I, I, um, I've not uh, utilized Instagram or but I, I have a LinkedIn uh, yeah. presence, yes. <clears throat> um, and my tagline is, there's a place for naked. It's just not on your windows. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, yeah. So the website is, uh, can, you, can you mention the website one more time, please? It's Suzanne's Heavenly Window Coverings.com. Awesome. All right, so to all my listeners, Please feel free to um, send, you know, reach out to Susan if you need anything regarding your window coverings. And I think she also accepts referrals. Yes. So, yes. Referral is uh, a key part of the business. So if you refer people to her, she'll be more than happy as well. So anyway, Susan, without taking much of your time, I want to say thank you for joining me on the program. I Thank know my you. listeners have learned one thing or even more from this segment. And I assure you people will reach out to you and also uh, want to do business with you. So thank, thank you, you and uh, have a wonderful rest of your day.